Uh, just before I start um, communion, um, I just want to share a little incident that happened to me this week. Um, I bought some vitamins online, you know, endorsed by an Australian celebrity, and I thought, oh, these will be good. They sound really good. So I was in the shop. I did it quickly, and um, a couple of days later, I thought, I don't remember seeing that order come through my email. <laughs> so one o'clock in the morning, I remembered this. So I got up. And here's this thing saying that I had been put on a $311 plan and they'd taken the $311.50 out of my account. So I grabbed my mobile phone, you know, I had my mobile phone. So I'm in the dark, Tom's lying fast asleep in bed. And here I check, yes, $311.50 had come out of my savings account. And I went, you idiot. You know, it took you ages to put that order in. You kept hesitating. Why didn't you listen to your instincts? So I got up, turned the computer on, sent them an email. And of course, it probably didn't get to them. And then I thought, I'm filling in a fraud thing on the on the bank, on my bank account. So I did that, got back to bed and I'm lying there. Lord, you know, I'm just so useless. I'm just so stupid all the time. You know, I'm this, I'm that. I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm going through everything, Lord. I'm a failure in this. I'm a failure in that. I'm a failure. And I'm just a failure, Lord. And now I feel like an idiot on top of it. And it's got like written on my forehead like those ads on telly years ago. Idiot, you know. So anyway, I'm lying there. I couldn't get back to sleep. And I'm berating myself. And then I started, okay, all right, you know, got to sing a little chorus to myself. And so this chorus came up. One of the lines was, he's our Prince of Peace. I said, yes, he's our Prince of Peace. And this peace just came all over me. I didn't get back to sleep, but I felt peaceful. And I just like knew that everything was going to be all right. Yeah. And so I got up in the morning. I thought, I'm, I'm getting up early. I'm going to ring the bank straight away and waited an hour before I could actually talk to someone. And, and the lady said, what were you buying, by the way? I said, vitamins. She said, vitamin gummies. She said, yep, it's spam. It's, it's a scam. I went, oh, you know. So I thought that's why it's taken an hour for you to talk to someone because these scams are going on all the time. Anyway, but I had real peace about it. And then Tom was worried about me when I told him. I said, no, I'm not worried. It's all under control. If I lose the money, if the bank doesn't reimburse me the money, I have learned a valuable lesson in life. Yes, and the money went back into the account two days ago. Praise so praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord, you know, and it just it just shows you that in the little things, God looks after you too. Because when I was telling him how useless I was and all the rest of it, he didn't answer me. Because I said to him, you've got to listen to this, Father. I'm telling you right now, this is, this is how it's come down, you know, how I think about myself. And there was silence. And then, you know, I started thinking of the little choruses. But it's strange because uh, the last couple of weeks, um, thinking I'll be doing communion soon, um, I was thinking about Peter. So this was a personal warning to Peter from Jesus in Luke. Oh, Simon, Simon, do you know that Satan has asked to have you all to sift like wheat? But I have prayed for you that you may not lose your faith. Yes, when you have turned back to me, you must strengthen those brothers of yours. Peter said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison or even to die with you. I tell you, Peter, Jesus returned, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times that you know me. But Jesus assured Peter, I have pleaded for you in prayer, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. And in this Psalm 36, it says, How precious is thy loving kindness, O Lord. So the sons of men take refuge under the shadow of your wings. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. That light has a name, hasn't it? It's Jesus. Jesus is the light. from one of um, Andrew Peterson's songs, is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our hearts? It is. It is good 
that we remind ourselves of this. It is. We have this wonderful word that we so desperately need, need to hear today. All Christians need to hear it, that Jesus prays for us. He prays for me. He prays for you guys. He prays for every one of his children. And that's the reason we can be so secure in our salvation, or that we can have that saving faith that won't fail us in times of needs, in the little things like just happened to me this week or in the bigger things that come across our paths in life. Jesus won't let it happen because he prays for us. It is his faith that we are given to live by and his faith that, the, that God the Father wants us to be in his family. You know, we all encounter struggles in our lives. Um, Zena, I mean, the struggles that zena has been through, not a lot of people would come through that, but her belief and her trust in God even though it was probably in the background quite a bit for some of those years, it came forward and the Holy Spirit started using it and strengthening her. We have lapses of fear and doubt about ourselves, but because of Jesus, he secures our salvation, doesn't he? He proved that by going to the cross. And as we sing again, does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. So Jesus didn't just come to forgive us, did he? But to bring us back into a right relationship with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit, a relationship of family. That's what the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit want us to be, family. Within their Trinity, we are held as family. And within ourselves, we hold them as family too. And we know that Peter felt united with Jesus because he knew that Jesus spoke eternal truth. And in Matthew, Jesus was saying to them, but what about you? He said to them, what do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So you can imagine how Peter must have felt after denying him three times. But Peter knew he was worthy and we sing again. He is worthy. He is worthy of all blessing and honour and glory. He is worthy. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? He is. Amen. God is relevant today, so don't leave him in a box when our sense of failure overcomes us and overwhelms us. Peter didn't. In Luke 24, the women, the women took the spices they had prepared and went down to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. So they went back and told the others. What did Peter do? He got up and ran straight to the tomb. <laughs> And he became one of the, he became the father of the Christian church, didn't he? He and the disciples, he was the first leader of the body of Christ, the Christian church. Today, religion is a corporate system. And it tells us how to forget God. <laughs> Unfortunately, the church down through the centuries has allowed darkness to creep in and cloud believers' faith and cloud their spirits. Uh, darkness could have crept in and overshadowed Peter completely, but it didn't. Jesus was his friend. Jesus was his saviour. And Jesus was the lover of his soul. So let it not cloud our souls when things go wrong in our lives today, when we feel we have failed as a Christian, as a believer in Christ. And we sing again. 
Every table is an altar. Every breath is a gift from you. Every moment is a treasure. Every day is a kiss from you. Jesus, only you can lead us through. This is our prayer today as we, as we break the bread. So let's grab our bread and wine. As we break the bread and pour the wine, let our hearts come alive in your presence. Let our fear fall away. Let our faith rise today in your presence, Lord Jesus, in your presence. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus. We thank you that you went to the cross. And this bread and this wine are emblems of your death, your forgiveness, and we thank you for your resurrection from the grave. We take this in remembrance of you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you.